the Divine Plan program presents the beautiful harmony of the scriptures. Enjoy the rich experience of discovering the truth of the Bible. The Lord says, Come, let us reason together. Welcome to the Divine Plan program. It has been our privilege for more than 40 years to share God's divine plan with the meek. Our subject today is entitled, Three Great Covenants. However, before beginning the lesson, let us look at the chart of the ages, the Bible in picture form. Let us go back to the time of Adam, who disobeyed the Creator and was sentenced to death. From that time down to the close of the Messianic age is a period of 7,000 years. In the Bible, this is called God's rest day. Did God get tired? No, he didn't get tired, but he rested from his earthly creation that it might be completed by his dear son. Now, the new creation is God's creation, but it is heavenly, not earthly. God rested from his earthly creation after Adam disobeyed. Now, we have not yet reached the end of God's rest day, but uh, nevertheless, the time will come by the end of the Messianic age in which the kingdom will be turned back to the Heavenly Father so that he may be all in all. 
Now with that, let us note uh, something that happened from the time of Adam's disobedience down to the third thousand year day. The third thousand year day from Adam brings us down to the time of Abraham shown on the chart by Pyramid C. Abraham was a friend of God uh, because that uh, he was a friend of God. Uh, he was uh, tentatively justified. Now, the Heavenly Father had a lot of confidence in Abraham because uh, the Heavenly Father used Abraham to picture himself. Uh, Abraham uh, uh, had three wives, and these three wives of Abraham uh, pictured three great covenants. Now, with that, let us go to Genesis, the uh, 22nd chapter. Uh, we would like to read beginning with verse 15. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Friends, this is a wonderful promise. Yes, all the families of the earth, all the nationalities of earth will be blessed in due time by the spiritual seed of Abraham. We note here in this promise that uh, there are two seeds involved, uh, one represented by the stars of heaven and the other by the sand upon the seashore. What does this mean? Well, we go to uh, Paul's words in uh, Galatians, the third chapter, verses 16 and 29, to identify the spiritual seed. There in uh, Galatians 3, 16, uh, Paul points out that primarily the spiritual seed of Abraham is Christ the head. However, it was the Father's plan for Jesus to have associates in the work of blessing all mankind. Therefore, Paul brings our attention in verse 29 that uh, if ye be Christ, that is, if you've come in under the one anointing, then you are the spiritual seed of Abraham and heirs according to the promise. So we note from this promise then that in due time, this spiritual seed of Abraham will bless all the families of the earth. The Heavenly Father saw fit to portray his plan, his plan of the ages, by using Abraham and Abraham's three wives. So on the third 1,000 year uh, day from uh, Adam brings us down to Abraham. Uh, remember that uh, Abraham's first wife was named Sarah, but uh, they didn't have any children. And uh, if all the families of the earth were to be blessed through the seed of Abraham, uh, they must have children. And uh, so um, uh, Sarah reasoned uh, with Abraham, why don't you marry Hagar? Now Hagar was uh, a type of the old law covenant, but um, Hagar was added until the promised seed should come. So in the course of time, um, Ishmael was born, but Ishmael was not the promised seed of Abraham. This was portraying how that uh, there would be this old law covenant. Now let us note that this old law covenant had a mediator. Moses was that mediator of the old law covenant. Moses was one man, whereas the mediator of the new covenant that we'll consider later on has many members. How many members uh, will constitute the better mediator? Well, the scriptures tell us it will be a little flock and then in Revelation, we read the number of that little flock. That number is 144,000 plus our Lord and head. You see, back to Galatians 3, 16 and 29. Christ primarily is the spiritual seed of Abraham. But if ye be Christ, then are you Abraham's spiritual seed and heirs according to the promise. Now, let us go to the time that the old law covenant was inaugurated. Uh, we go to the time of uh, Moses. Uh, Moses lived a period of time after Abraham. Abraham is shown by Pyramid C, but um, Moses lived uh, later than that. 
And uh, so it was Moses who was used to be the mediator of the old law covenant. Let us uh, uh, turn to the uh, book of Exodus and uh, note just what occurred at the time of that uh, inauguration uh, of the old law covenant. You know, after all, we've seen that Abraham was, uh, or rather uh, Moses was just uh, one individual. Uh, of course, Abraham was just one individual also. But uh, here we're talking now about Moses. And um, uh, Moses uh, was used to give this covenant to the nation of Israel. But something had to occur to make Israel look to uh, Moses, the mediator. So we read here in Exodus uh, uh, the 19th chapter, beginning with verse 16. Uh, and it came to pass on the third day in the morning. Oh, that's interesting. Why was it the third day? Well, friends, it was the third day uh, from the time of Adam down to Moses. Not that it was three full thousand-year days, but uh, rather parts of 3,000-year days. And uh, so here, the old law covenant was inaugurated on the third day in the morning, early in the morning of this third day. And what occurred at that time? Well, continuing here in Exodus, uh, we uh, read that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. Oh, that must have been quite a scene there with the thunders and the lightnings. Uh, have you ever been in a thunderstorm? Uh, you know, you get excited, don't you? You, you see the lightning flashes. Well, uh, this was permitted there on the third thousand year day from Adam to draw attention to Moses so that Moses could speak to Israel. And continuing here, we note that there was a voice of the trumpet. And we note that this was exceeding loud so that all the people who were in the camp uh, tremble. Well, now, actually, this reminds us to our day. Let's look on the chart to our day. It's this period of time between 7 and 10 in which uh, these things are happening. Uh, there is the sound of a trumpet. And this trumpet sounds louder and louder. Because of the events uh, happening in the earth today, men's hearts are failing them for fear. Yes, they are trembling because of the current events. Oh, the trouble is increasing. But why is God permitting this trouble? Well, he's permitting it to cause some people now and others later to look to the better mediator, which we have seen as the Christ head and body members. But now back to the time of Moses and the old law covenant. Uh, you see, when uh, these events uh, happen, the thunders, the lightnings, the thick cloud, the sound of this trumpet exceeding loud, waxing louder and louder. Then we read in verse 19 uh, that uh, Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. You see, now the people in Israel were ready to listen to Moses, the mediator of that law covenant. Well, that law covenant, as we've seen, was typified by uh, Hagar, uh, who became the wife of Abraham. And uh, so this shows that uh, the old law covenant was added until the promised seed uh, should come. Well, we know that that promised seed of Abraham is the Christ, as we've already emphasized. Now, this uh, law covenant was from the time of uh, Moses until Jesus made an end of the law. Uh, let us look at the chart, and there at the cross, Jesus made an end to that law to those who would accept Jesus. However, uh, those Jews who have not accepted Jesus are still bound by that old law covenant. But let us just emphasize that to those who accept Jesus, uh, the law ended there at the uh, cross. Now let us uh, go to uh, the time when um, Isaac uh, was born. You know, in the course of time, Sarah brought forth Isaac. Isaac was the promised seed. Now Sarah pictures the grace covenant or the Sarah feature of the Abrahamic covenant. Let's review Hagar pictured the old law covenant, but Sarah pictured the grace covenant, the Sarah feature of this Abrahamic covenant. Now, Paul calls it a covenant by sacrifice. 
In Romans 12, 1, the apostle says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Yes, this is the covenant under which the ones in the gospel age are being developed to become the spiritual seed of Abraham. It's a wonderful privilege, friends, to be invited by the Heavenly Father, He does the calling, to make this covenant. Now, in the process of selecting this spiritual seed of Abraham during the gospel age shown here on the chart, uh, many have been called, but uh, only a few respond to that. Few are chosen, and of the few who make this covenant with God by sacrifice, still fewer are faithful unto uh, death. Friends, if we have made that covenant by sacrifice, let us endeavor to develop a character pleasing to the Heavenly Father so that we can be a part of that spiritual seed of Abraham. And remember, it's the spiritual seed of Abraham that in due time will bless all the families of the earth. Well, when will this happen? Well, let's look at the chart again. And we note that the spiritual seed of Abraham will bless all the families of the earth during the time from 10 to 11. Uh, that's the time that the new covenant will be in operation. But now back to the Sarah feature of the Abrahamic covenant. Uh, let us uh, note an account uh, which is very interesting. You remember Abraham uh, pictured the heavenly father. And uh, in the course of time after Isaac was born, uh, the almighty creator requested Abraham to offer Isaac well, now, uh, some of us have uh, children or have had children. And um, if this is the case, what would you do if someone told you to kill one of your children? Would you do it? Well, Abraham, full of faith, responded to this request from the Creator. And so Abraham went on a journey uh, to sacrifice his son Isaac. And the uh, scriptures indicate that um, it was early in the morning on the third day, the third day again, which is interesting, that Abraham looked, lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. You see, uh, let us review a little bit. From Adam down to um, uh, the time of Abraham was parts of 3,000 year days. And so from the time of Abraham down to the death of Jesus, look again on the chart at the time that Jesus died, uh, was uh, a part of 3,000 year days. So, you see, if the demands of justice against the human race were to be met, it would require a loving father offering his only son in uh, sacrifice. Now, what's going to happen on the third 1,000-year day from the time of the death of Jesus? Well, uh, you know, it's going to be uh, parts of three days, and uh, uh, most of that time has uh, already uh, passed because we're now... Uh, in the beginning of the third uh, thousand year day from the sacrifice of Jesus to the time in which all the nations of the earth will be blessed. But still, this promised seed of Abraham must be completed uh, before the trouble is stopped and then the new covenant inaugurated. We know that the new covenant will be inaugurated at number 10 on the chart uh, after it is sealed with the precious blood of Jesus. You see, at the time that Jesus died, he placed this uh, sacrifice in the hands of justice. This ransom price then has been in the hands of justice all down through the gospel age. It has not yet been paid over officially to justice. When this ransom price is paid over officially to justice, uh, then uh, the world of mankind will be turned over to the better mediator. Now that new covenant will be sealed in with the precious blood of Jesus just at the time this great time of trouble is stopped, is terminated, represented by number 10 on the chart. Now after this uh, new covenant has been sealed, uh, there will be uh, those who had faith from the time of Abel down to and including John the Baptist, uh, who will be um, uh, resurrected and made princes in the earthly phase of the kingdom. They will be able to communicate with the spiritual phase of the kingdom. And uh, then it is uh, the new covenant will be inaugurated. Uh, let us uh, go over to the prophecy of Jeremiah concerning this inauguration of the new covenant. And uh, friends, we hope you'll make a note of this because it's a beautiful passage. This is Jeremiah 31, starting with verse 31. Uh, there we read, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant 
uh, with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. We've just seen how that uh, at the time of Moses, the old law covenant was inaugurated with uh, the nation of Israel. And so this new law covenant, Jeremiah tells us, will be inaugurated with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And then continuing in verse 32, I'm not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people." And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. What a wonderful promise, uh, friends. When that new covenant is inaugurated uh, with those in Israel with faith, then, as we have seen, uh, the ancient worthies will be able to communicate God's law uh, through the better mediator uh, with those in Israel with faith. And then it is that uh, others in Israel will begin to take note that God is blessing Israel in a special way. Then the Gentiles will take note. Well, why can't we have this wonderful government extended to our part of the world? And thus this kingdom will grow and grow until it fills the whole earth. Yes, the scriptures tell us that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will fill the entire earth as the waters cover the sea. And none will need to say to his neighbor, Know the Lord, for they shall all know him, the least and to the greatest. Yes, this is possible because Jesus gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Let us just note the scales here and uh, note how that uh, these scales would picture how that uh, Jesus died for Adam. Uh, Adam was created perfect, but Adam sinned. So Jesus, a perfect human being, at the age of 30, consecrated, and three and a half years later, died on the cruel cross, thus giving himself a ransom for all. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 through 6, we read, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Returning to the wives of Abraham, after Sarah died, Abraham married a third wife. Her name was Keturah. Keturah and Abraham had many children. Keturah is a type of the new law covenant. Under the new covenant arrangement, all of the race of Adam who come into harmony with that arrangement will become Abraham's earthly seed represented by the sand upon the seashore. A beautiful type indeed, showing how that uh, many of Adam's race will uh, be restored to human perfection after they have repented of sin, accepted Jesus, and obeyed the arrangements of the new law covenant. Yes, uh, that is indeed a beautiful uh, type. Now, let us uh, note that um, uh, Isaac and Rebekah were married in Sarah's tent after Sarah had died. Now, this beautifully shows that the time will come in which the Sarah feature of the Abrahamic covenant will come to an end. It will come to an end when the bride has made herself ready. Now, let us look at the chart and we see this uh, pyramid uh, W uh, which uh, depicts the marriage of uh, the Christ, head and body. Christ is the bridegroom, and uh, he and the bride will be united after that last member has made his or her calling and election sure. And then it is after this that um, uh, all the families of the earth will be blessed. You see, the Christ, head and body, will adopt Adam and his race, and therefore loving them so much as uh, our Lord loved them and as the bride will love them, they will desire that uh, 
all who will do so will repent of sin and thus become the earthly seed of Abraham. It is a joy to understand regarding these three great covenants. Hagar typified the old law covenant, Sarah the grace covenant or the covenant by sacrifice, Keturah typified the new covenant. How wonderful it will be, friends, when this trouble is stopped in the earth and the new covenant is inaugurated. Now remember that it was Keturah who typified the new law covenant. Abraham and Keturah had many children. This uh, typified the fact that under the new covenant arrangement, there will be many of uh, Abraham's earthly seed. Yes, all who gain life will be Israelites indeed. Friends, we have not had time to go into further detail concerning these three great covenants, but we would like to encourage you to send for a free copy of uh, this uh, chart of the ages. This is a small chart, but we would like for you to have a free copy. There is no obligation. Please be ready to write down our mailing address as the announcer gives it. Also, the announcer will give our 800 number. We look forward to uh, having you tune in another Divine Plan program this same time next week. Goodbye until we meet again, and may God bless you. Amen. I love to tell the story. For the free literature offered on the Divine Plan program, please phone the sponsors at 1-800-8-DIVINE. 1-800-8-D-I-V-I-N-E. Enjoy the rich experience of discovering the truth of the Bible. Please phone Divine Plan at 1-800-8-DIVINE or write to Divine Plan, Post Office Box 4085, Fort Worth, Texas, 76164. May you be blessed as you study the Divine Plan of the Ages. Thank you.